Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even some true crime. And even. And even. Shoo. This we have, has... We have already had our share of technical issues with this podcast. Yeah. Apparently, our internet in here, our my internet, crashed. And we actually had to call the internet company to have it reset by them. Was that tonight? Just now? Just now. Oh, neat. At the same time that your Skype was ish- having issues, my internet decided to go out. Lovely. <sighs> and you wonder why we missed a week. Kind of. Actually, we're going to explain that now. We explained it in the first take of this, but we had to delete that because it was crap. Yeah, it was about 20 minutes of us shouting, Can you hear me? Can you hear me? At each other. Yes. Okay, so as you notice, we kind of missed a week. And that is because Holly has had a very, very busy... Which, this is the busiest time of Holly's year. From Yeah, between now until November. November. Yeah, I mean, we have it's no secret. We've talked about it a hundred times on this podcast that I'm a single mom. Um, what? You are? I am. Yep. Um, anyway, so I'm a single mom. And in addition to, you know, being a single mom with a full-time job, I am also president of the middle school PTO. So this is our... This, the gear up for school starting is one of our busiest times. Um, we've got... Uh, a hundred different things going on. I've got letters that I have to write to all the new parents, welcoming them, um, fundraisers to plan for at the whole year. Um, let me see what else. We've got open houses for each grade. Uh, that kind of thing. In addition to that, I'm also secretary of the BAM Booster. Um, so, I've got regular parent volunteer stuff with the band, and I've got, you know, additional duties with being a secretary, and Abby is a senior this year, so... And it's that, band camp. And it's and we've had two weeks of band camp, and it feels like me and maybe two other parents are the only volunteers, so it's been, it's been crazy. Um... But in addition to that, uh, my day job that I love very, very much, that it's, it's my, it is my dream job, um, is pushing for a lot of face-to-face visits, so I'm on the road a lot, too. So it's, I'm, I feel like I'm pulled in about a million different directions. And it'll be this way until state finals in November. Yeah. Last weekend in October is state finals, and then, then it'll, well, then right after that, we've got all district concert band, and. Yeah, so. but that, that's, that's busy, but it's not marching band busy. True. Like, if, if you, if there's any parents that listen, um, that are marching band parents, I'm sure that you will understand Oh, yeah, and I'm also on the prop committee because I don't like to not have props like when we should have them. So I'm also building and painting and getting the props ready for our show because I don't have anything else going on. (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of not having anything else to go on, we are now on YouTube. That's awesome. Yay! And I'm so glad that you're handling the whole YouTube avenue because... I've, I've just got too much. You do. But I am handling YouTube and we are Haunted Family Podcast on YouTube because we're boring and we don't like change. That's right. And we like for you to be able to find us. Um, check out our first video. It's up. And it kind of documents our East Coast tour of pilot truck stops. Which was a lot of fun. It was. I can't wait to do it again. Okay, so I think that most of our listeners, if not all of our listeners, have a social media account. 
Probably. At Although, least, at least I have one. encountered people without social media, and it always freaks me out. Let's see. I have Instagram and Twitter and, of course, Facebook. Well, I have all of those also, but I never use Twitter, so I sometimes forget I even have it. Um, I do sporadically Instagram. I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I pretty much just kind of scroll through and that's it. We're much more active on our Haunted Family Podcast Instagram account. We are. But sometimes being on social media can... I, I don't know. Bring out the worst in people? Oh, yes. I, I definitely think Armchair that... Armchair warriors. I definitely think that, especially Facebook, brings out the absolute worst in people. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Um, when, when the Seahawks beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl a few years ago, that's a time I don't like to talk about. Um, it's almost like my team didn't even show up, but that's okay. That's okay. We're, let it go, huh? Let it go. Um, I, I, I had to delete and block some people because I'm a sore loser. And, um, uh, yeah, so I, they were, you know, being sore winners and I, I had to delete and block them on Facebook because I don't, I don't like drama and I was afraid that I was going to. Say something I regretted. Okay, so I'm sure we've all seen those posts that circulate where people are telling their story about how they were saved from imminent disaster because of some little thing or how some little thing put them at risk. It really yes. just, it breeds fear. It doesn't actually do anything helpful. It just breeds fear. Right. And somebody on one of um, a Facebook group that I'm part of that deals with embroidery of all things posted that and I was like you know that from a perspective of someone who went to school for this and as someone who you know has a podcast dealing with true crime I'm telling you that that really doesn't you know it. this is not helpful the helpful hint that you're giving in this clip doesn't do anything. And I got ganged up on by a bunch of mommies. Hey, and I use that in a derogatory moms term. Moms are awful. They I mean, are. As a, coming from a mom, we are awful. There is nobody in the world that is more bullish. Well, bullies. I mean, they were bullies. A, it's a mama bear thing. I mean, moms are vicious. Well, you know what? Some of them are also stupid. Well, and these group of mommies were stupid. And I think it is really funny when women who want to talk about how bullying is wrong gang up on somebody who's just trying to explain to them the error of their ways and bully them. Well, I mean, there is a reason why little kids bully because they see it. From their mommies. From their mommies. And I'm not saying that all moms are bad. But I'm sure that almost every listener out here has had an experience with that type of mom. I promise I'm not that type of mom. And in my mind, I'm picturing the whole Kate Gosselin hair, let me speak to the manager type of woman. And that's my favorite picture of myself, is with my Kate hair. But anyway, um, a couple months ago, back during the whole um, Dakota Access Pipeline um, standoff. Some of y'all may remember that Holly and I designed a shirt that Holly was selling in her Etsy t-shirt site. Oh yeah, see, you had another thing that I do that I'm, I'm busy with. <laughs> and we was doing this to raise money that we turned around and donated to the legal fund to help the protesters who were being arrested. It's a cause that Holly and I both felt very passionate about. So we right. wanted to give back. We are, our ancestors are Sioux. So it really, it was something that really spoke to us. And. But neither one of us had the money out of pocket to just donate money. So we came up with this fundraiser 
And the money we raised from the fundraiser went to this cause. Right. Well, I got into a disagreement on a homesteading Facebook group. I will not mention what the group's name is. And it was about something really mundane. Like, Isn't it always? I don't even remember exactly what it was now. Maybe... I want to say it was like peas or no, no. asparagus. Oh, yes, asparagus. It was asparagus. This woman who was claiming to be a botanist was saying that there was only like one type of asparagus or something like that. And I was like, well, no, there's like, there's all of these different varieties and types of asparagus. And these are edible asparagus and these are only used decoratively. And anyway, she flipped out, went total psychotic. And started Facebook stalking not only me but Holly of all people. And then she ended up then she ended up blocking Holly. Normally, yeah, normally I keep all of my um, Facebook posts private so that you have to be a friend of mine to see my posts. But the T-shirt posts I made public so that people could share them. And I guess she found Holly through that. And the girl like flipped out going crazy, harassing us, threatening to um, expose us for um, using the Dakota Access Pipeline protest to make money for ourselves, which, I mean, Holly has the proof that we donated the money. Big deal. You know, whatever she wanted to do, we had, you know, proof that we were on the up and up. Flipped out. And then she starts attacking me and our sometimes editor Hannah because Hannah stepped in and was like dude what are you doing um so yeah she, she was crazy and she started literally Facebook stalking me and Hannah and Holly and I was in fear of her searching for me online and finding out where I live that's how unstable this woman was presenting herself over asparagus. Well, I was I was coming back from shopping with my youngest, Abby and Hannah uh, weren't with us. And then all of a sudden I would get like sporadic um, not really messages but like where somebody would tag, like where Hannah would tag me in a comment or something. And I was very confused. I couldn't see this conversation online because the person had blocked me. Um, so I I had no clue what was going on. It was it was very crazy. I dropped Emmy off at a friend's house because she was spending the night with um, actually the friend that we talked about in the last episode, Honora. So I dropped her off at Honora's house. That's just and a pretty name. It it really is. Um, actually, she was with her tonight too. Very like. Um, you would think like that she's there all the time, but she's really not. <laughs> um, and then I came home, and, and then I, I was trying to like find the conversation so that I could defend myself from whatever was going on. But by this time, Hannah had pretty much taken care of it for me, and, and Heather had defended herself. But yeah, I was very confused about what was going on. Yeah, um, I had to get the group moderators involved, and she got blocked from that group, and I think she spent some time in Facebook jail over it, because, you know, she was making some pretty serious threats about, against me, and Hannah, and it was really unstable, and that woman takes her asparagus very seriously. <laughs> I mean, you know, asparagus is super healthy, so I kind of understand it. I have a plot of asparagus in my backyard. In her honor? No, I grew it before I even met this crazy lady. But oh. thankfully, unlike some of the stories we'll be talking about tonight, no one died in that confrontation. Well, that's good, because several people die in the stories that we're talking about tonight. I know. Um, and let's just get right into it. Okay, so... This this first one that we're talking about kind of speaks 
like not really speaks to me but uh it hits close to home um on may 12th 2009 sarah richardson who's 26 um she was in the process of getting a divorce from her husband edward it was and big age gap was, between them yeah and so I mean, there's nothing wrong with that but it just struck me as weird that he was such a huge age gap yeah and but my my age gap was not that extreme but it, it doesn't matter um so they were they were getting divorced and Sarah had in this case Sarah had moved back home with her parents and she changed her Facebook relationship from married to single because she was in that process of getting divorced well in my case um, I still lived there and I had not filed for divorce or anything but I was I that was my way of saying hey guess why we're getting divorced is I changed my relationship status to single and we had a two stores an a-frame and so the top floor was like a balcony bedroom bathroom kind of thing wait hold on and this is the same ex that we've talked about with the um haunted house yes and this was actually the haunted house so he comes over the back like hangs himself not hang himself but you know he comes leaning over the balcony and he says you're not oh started to say something bad but he said you are not single yet and i was like well give me time buddy um so yeah, that's how I told him that I was getting divorced, and thankfully he did not kill me or himself. Ah, oh, that would have been a blessing. Um, yeah. So in this case, though, although you know, I'm really surprised that his sister didn't kill one of us. Yeah, she was pretty unstable. Yes, she was. We both received threats from her. I I never even met the woman. You're not missing anything. So, well, she's dead now, so I'm not really, really not missing anything now. Yeah. So what happened is Edward broke into Sarah's parents' house with a butcher knife and some duct tape, or not duct tape, but um, maybe it was duct tape. Anyway, the tape was to keep like the sound of breaking glass quiet and all that. So he breaks into her house. And stabs her 13 times. And it's so violent. He punctures her liver. He punctures her aorta. He breaks some ribs. She ends up with 39 separate lacerations on her body. I mean, and obviously, she died. He then flees the scene. Tries to slash his wrist. And tries to slash his throat with the same butcher knife. And then he ends up tracking somebody down. And they... Uh, have EMS come and get them and um, so he he lives but she did not um, then he comes out but after he gets to live the rest of his life he does um, but he it took it took them only three hours to convict him of murder and he has to spend a minimum of 18 years in prison. This happened somewhere in England. I'm not. I'm not really for sure where at. But I, and I don't know how England handles like parole and stuff. He maybe. may spend the rest of his yeah, life in prison. Yeah, I, I don't you know. know. Um, maybe one of our listeners from the United Kingdom will let us know what happens over there because we don't know. He did try to, once, you know, all of this was said and done, he he pulls the all. I knew that I was stabbing her, but I didn't know that she had died, and I'm very distraught that she's dead. Um, I just can't recall the details of what happened. And, you know, then he just says that the divorce was putting extreme stress on him. Yeah. You know what was probably putting extreme stress on her? Dealing with his ass. That is what happened to poor Sarah Richardson. Tragic. It is. Really tragic. I know. She was young. Well, several of our stories that we'll talk about tonight deal with a love triangle. Girls, 
guys, I'm here to tell you, there is nobody on this earth that is wonderful and special and precious enough for you to get into a love triangle with and kill the other person. There's just, just not. No guy yeah, in the world out. is good enough for you to stab, run over with a car, whatever, another girl for. And no girl. And no girl. That's so, here we've got the story of Tori Lynn Emery. Oh, Tori Lynn. Tori Lynn had her had um her eye on this guy. Who was in prison, by the way. Yeah, who was in prison. So, you know, he's a catch. And <laughs> this girl... I always like to choose my guys that's straight from prison. <laughs> well, you know, I mean... No. Lot Ted Bundy got marriage proposals. It happens. No. I mean, I do, I do have an ex that was in prison and then he got out and then he got put back in. I don't know if he's in or out. Do you know if he's in or out? Who? My ex that was in prison. I didn't know you had an ex that was in prison. Yeah, well, I'm not going to say his name because he's in prison. But Well, you're going to have to text me his name and I'll tell you if he's in prison or not. <laughs> Mom's neighbor. Oh, I didn't know you dated him. Very briefly. I think he's in a halfway house. I will pull that up, though. Okay. Because I literally already had cool open because I was checking on the whereabouts of dear old Amanda Bowen, who was recently convicted for um, killing some, killing a couple in the next county over from me. Oh, fun times. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about good old Tori Lynn. So her and this girl, Danielle Booth, yeah, both had their eye on this winner of a guy who was in prison. Yes. Yeah. And halfway house. Sorry. He is in a halfway house? Yes. Okay. I guess you can say they started fighting on Facebook. Well, I mean, they started fighting on Facebook. And in true Facebook fashion, things escalated quickly. Because fights on Facebook seem to burn like wildfire. Because everyone is super brave behind their keyboard. When was it? July of 2010? July 21st of 2010. And this happened in Pontiac, Michigan. In where? Pontiac, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Good old Pontiac. Emery noticed Booth riding in the passenger side of a car driven by um, a woman named Alicia Abernathy. Now, Alicia Abernathy was sort of innocent in all this. She was not part of this Facebook feud. She did not want this winner of a guy. But Tori Lynn didn't care. And she began using her car as a battering ram against um... Alicia Abernathy's car. Yeah, and she ended up knocking this car well, yeah, during, into... During this, during this chase, they were reaching speeds of over 80 miles an hour. Of course, you know, Alicia Abernathy trying to get away from Toyland Emery, and Toyland Emery trying to keep up with her so she can continue ramming her car. Right, so Alicia ended um, up running a red light trying to get away. Yeah, at one point... Um, a Pontiac police detective saw what was going on and he proceeded to try to stop this. But it was no use. Um, Abernathy's car went through a red light and she was struck by another vehicle and she died. And Daniel Booth was seriously injured in it. Um, Tori was fine. Yeah, of course Tori was fine. And so was her young daughter who was in the car with her. Yep, she had a three-year-old in the back seat. So not only does she get the um, Girlfriend of the Year Award, but she also gets Mother of the Year Award. So um, she ended up being charged with um, second-degree murder and assault with intent to cause bodily harm. 
and through a, I guess a plea deal, she pled no contest and they dropped the um, child endangerment charges against her. Um, Emery did flee the scene also, so... Well, I mean, she was already going 80 miles an hour. What's a little bit more and escape the... Hubba? Well, did she take her kid with her or did she just leave the poor baby in the back seat of the car while she ran off? I don't know. But, um... I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not for sure what her... I just know that she got second degree murder uh, assault. She, I don't think... I don't have any notes on what she was sentenced to. Now, I do have no saying that um, her daughter is now in foster care. Poor child. You think? Foster care is no no place to grow up. Oh, she was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Okay. So she will not get to see her child grow up because she got into a fight over a boy. Totally not worth it. People, people, it's not that serious. Guys come and go. Girls come and go. It's okay. I think our next story... Our next story could almost be a stupid criminal. I mean, all of these, to an extent, could be a stupid criminal. But this next one, probably more than any. Yeah, so I, all of them, to an extent, could be a stupid criminal. But I think that this one really could be a stupid criminal. Yeah. So we've got Scott Humphrey. And... Uh, Scott had a girlfriend, and I don't have her name. But this also happened in England. Hmm. You English uh, people are so... They're serious about their Facebook. They are, but you know what? So are we. Uh, that's true. And our asparagus, apparently. Yes. I am dead serious about my asparagus. Um, okay, so we've got Scott Humphrey, and Scott had a girlfriend. And... His friend, Richard Rovetto, uh, poked his friend on Facebook. Now, I, I'm going to be the first to admit, I do not understand. He probably does not have a girlfriend now. The poking thing on Facebook. Like, I know that supposedly it has an underlying, like, sinister message. But, you know, I get poked by um, my friend's wife. I mean, I guess she's also my friend, but, like, I get poked by female people. I, I get poked by kids. Like, you know, I oh, actually haven't been poked in a while. But I'm just saying that I have been poked by a variety of people. And I did not assume that all of these people were interested in anything. I probably have hundreds of unanswered pokes right now because I'm just too lazy to poke back. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, like, to me, a poke means, hey, I'm kind of thinking about you, but I didn't want to take the effort to write you something. I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. Um, but, anyway, he apparently right. took poking as this guy was flirting with his girlfriend. Yes. So, they were in a taxi together, um, and... Humphrey asked him, you know, if you're such a good friend of mine, why would you poke my girlfriend? And that just kind of, like, started a fight right there. And they, in the taxi, were fighting. And Humphrey just kept punching him and punching him. And he died just a few hours later from the, the trauma of being punched. Well, he also fell at one point and hit his head. Because right. he would be attacked so viciously by Scott Humphrey. Right. And, and poor, poor Roberto was only 27 years old. Scott Humphrey was 29. And he, Scott ended up spending four years in jail, or four years in prison, for killing him. And it's stupid. The poke is not that serious. No. I mean, heck, I could walk up to somebody on the street and poke them, and it would be less, it would be 
more serious than poking on Facebook. It means nothing. But apparently it was worth murder. No, it's never worth murder. Okay, so for the record, there are over 300 species of um, asparagus plants in the asparagus family. <laughs> I am now going to Facebook stalk you and harass you. Please so, don't. just letting you know that. Yeah, please don't. So, how many of our listeners remember the MySpace? I loved MySpace. I miss MySpace. I do too. Listen, MySpace was colorful. You had music. There was glitter. Like, MySpace was so much cooler than Facebook. I could rate my friends. It could be pink. Like, MySpace was perfect. I loved MySpace. I did too. And then Facebook had to come along and be all boring and white with just a little bit of blue. So, way back in uh, 2008, I think 2008 was sort of MySpace's peak. I think so. This 15 year old kid named Houston 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 Schlicker had been, um, I guess you would say he was having some emotional issues. Oh, what team does not? Exactly. And he was threatening to kill himself on the MySpace. His dad, when his dad found out, his dad banned him from the internet. And right. More specifically, banned him from MySpace. Why his dad didn't, you know, seek out mental health help, I don't know. And he, he may, he just may have. It was I don't know. But young Houston decided that he was going to get some retribution. There's a fine line between suicide and homicide. And on this day, young Houston decided on the ladder. He grabbed a 12 gauge shotgun, and when his dad came into the house, he shot him in the back of the head. Crazy. Yeah. So this poor kid has ruined his family and his whole future. And I hope that at some point he got the mental health help that he needed. Um, I couldn't find any references online, probably because he was a minor at the time, about what help he received. But then again, he may not have received any. I just watched a documentary earlier on um, the prison system in Kentucky, and I was absolutely, literally appalled at these judges and caseworkers who were looking at this teenage girl who was telling them what her issues were and they were saying well we're gonna try to help you we're gonna try to help you and then provided absolutely no help to meet what she needed and just kept sending her back to the juvenile justice system I think at one point I literally screamed at the TV okay but enough on me ranting about the justice system who do we have next oh next is Adam Mann Oh, what did Adam do? Well, Adam's another Brit. Yeah, I don't know why well, we're very British tonight. We're not picking on you British people. We just found the most most intriguing stories tonight came from England. Yeah. Um, and that might be because you Brits know how to write a news article. Right. Listen, the Daily Mail, I'm loving it. Okay. So, what did Adam do? Well, it all starts with what Lisa did. Who so, is Lisa? Lisa was Adam's um, wife or baby mama. I'm not for sure. Um, she was the mother of his child. And Adam had not been paying child support. And Lisa posted on Facebook about how she had turned him in to um, it, whatever our, like, what's, I don't even know what our child support office 
thing here is called child support. I don't know. I don't know. And I definitely don't know what it's oh. called in England. Right. Well, anyway, so she was going to turn him in for not paying child support to whatever office that is called. I started to say CPS, which is Child Protective Services, but that's not it. Yeah, so she was going to turn him in, and she posted on Facebook about how he hadn't paid. And, like, she was like, who's laughing now? You've got done big time. Um, so now you're going to leave us alone for good. Your son hates you, and so do I. Now... I'm going to say, women, I'm talking to you for a second. It's not cool, no matter how angry your ex-husband makes you, to post stuff that your children may one day see. We've got to be good adults and not put them in the middle of it. So... No matter what happens, you need to think that that's still your child's parent and you need to not say or do anything that might upset the child. Even if they are behind on child support. Don't talk about it in front of the kids. Don't post it on social media. Now, I don't think that you deserve to be killed if you do post it, but apparently... Adam Man thought so because he beat his ex with a hammer and then left the body there for their five year old to find. So, men, don't abuse or kill your ex wives and definitely don't leave them for your child to find. That's very traumatic. <sighs> he, he really did a number on her. It, yeah. was, it was really gruesome to read the description of what happened. And then that poor little sweet five-year-old boy to find his mom. Like that. Right. And listen, this little boy was awesome. He called his grandparents. Yeah, apparently his mom had it was a diabetic. And she had instilled in him that if he ever found her um, in a position where she wasn't waking up to call his grandfather. Um, I don't know how many people are um, familiar with diabetes, but um, sometimes diabetics can fall into like a diabetic coma, and they need immediate medical help. So this little boy called his grandfather, and his grandfather came over, expecting to find his daughter having a you know a very low blood sugar reading or something, and walked in to find her literally in a pool of blood but that kid that kid is such a trooper now I, I don't know the exchange rate between us and England but he was supposed to pay $17 a week English currency hold on I can find that out real quick and it was backdated so he owed $400 Okay, he had to pay 17 a week. Uh huh. 17 euros is $20 a week. Okay, so he was supposed to pay $20 a week. $80 a month. All of this over $80 a month. Okay, so how. And $400 would be like $470. What could you buy for the girls for $20 a week? I, I don't know. I don't know that I could pay anything. I mean. Abby's band fees? That wouldn't even come near paying the band fees. Abby's band fees are $200. Um, we have I various... Know, I know Abby probably eats... I, I know Emmy probably eats more than $20 in like the first three days of the week. Yeah. Your I mean, can, okay, so... Yeah. You know, we've got... Like a healthy appetite. They've got... Like, well, okay, we're just not even going to talk about food, utilities, clothes. We're not going to talk about any of that. Just stuff from school. Band fees. So, then, she doesn't have choir fees. Neither one of them have choir fees. But they have, um, they'll audition for something extra. So, they'll have, like, all state fees. Or they'll have, uh, like, all district fees. That pays for the music. Because choir music is expensive. So, 
uh, they'll have a certain fee that'll be like a folder fee and it'll it'll be their music then they like when they do the musical or uh, the play with the drama department there's costume fees and then there is on top of the costume fees um, we'll have a program and so we're supposed to sell so many ads I suck at selling stuff so I just buy a you know good luck ad in the program so just between band and choir we far exceeded twenty dollars a week I mean that's not even I mean, that's not counting like in anything really like I mean I would not I wouldn't thumb my nose at twenty dollars a week but twenty dollars a week doesn't even scratch the stuff that they do I think this dad was getting off way easy yeah I mean we have a friend that's in prison right now for not paying child support um, so this the Facebook post happened on September 14th on September 15th um, he got man got the letter from it says CSA so it would be this child support administrative office I don't know I'm just making that up because I don't know what it's called um, yeah so he called the agency and said that he was homeless and he wasn't going to pay until there was a DNA test done to prove that it was his son and uh, he killed her that night she had broken ribs extensive bruising over her entire body uh, defensive wounds where she tried to protect herself he had a new girlfriend during this time named Elizabeth she was 27 and uh, she gave a false alibi women please don't don't try to protect your man by lying to the police it never works well so yeah that's what happened with um, Adam Mann and in true Haunted Family podcast fashion we get halfway into the editing the podcast and half of the podcast is gone so we're going to have to end it with Adam Mann um, thanks for listening hopefully next week um, we'll be able to finish social media murders um, yeah so that's what happened like us on facebook and instagram and if you would like follow us on our new youtube channel um hopefully we will have new stuff out starting um pretty regularly um anyway thanks for listening bye